And for Christmas in our homes, things have not been too quiet in our schools either. I expect many of you proud parents and grandparents will have been to see the school play and marvelled at the talent of your offspring. Well, it's time to marvel some more because here's a talented group of youngsters from the Children's Music Theatre in an excerpt from a BBC Two programme we'll be seeing on January the 7th. It's part of a play with music about hop picking in Kent called Bendigo Boswell. <laughs> such enthusiasm. Well, the Children's Music Theatre was begun in 1976 by Jeremy James Taylor. Jeremy, you were a, a producer in your own right with adults and professionals. Why do you choose children to work with occasionally? Well, um, it all started when, when a friend of mine who was a teacher asked me to go to his school and do, and do a production there. And I, I agreed and uh, had an absolutely marvellous time. And I enjoyed it as much as the, the children seemed to, and the audience seemed to as well. And it was that one thing led to another. Um, and the show that we did at the school then led to another one at that school, which went into another theatre in the holidays, and we took that one to Edinburgh and so on and so forth. And the thing's just grown and grown over the last six years. You caused quite a stir when you went to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. What kind of response did you get? Well, we... <laughs> We took a company up there of, what, 12-year-olds to do a play which we'd, we'd written, a musical play. We couldn't find a theatre, so we, we put up a tent, a big marquee, and built a theatre inside it. And we uh, did this musical show up there. I was absolutely terrified. I didn't know what the world would make of it. Mercifully, the world at large took it very seriously, um, enjoyed it, but took it very seriously and uh, applauded their work, quite rightly so, and bestowed various awards on us, and uh, right. off we went. Yeah. You, your age ranged from what, from about 10 to 17? Yes, we were seven, seven is the youngest that we've mm. ever worked with, but about the 10, 10 to 17 year old age mm. group, yeah. How do you manage, I mean they're all at school, and you only rehearse during holidays, how on earth do you manage to get them together? Well with great difficulties, <laughs> that, but uh, we've got a very good administrator. Mm. Uh, but uh, we, we put a show together at one school in the term time, it's that school's play perhaps. But then come the holidays, we take the goods and chattels of that production and the sets and the costumes and we, we recast as, as necessary. I mean, some children don't want to do it mm. and others can't and so on and so forth. And so we've done a lot of the graft already during term time at the mm. school, as it were, under, in the school's curriculum. I see. And then um, in the holidays, we, we, we work very fast. We get some very talented children mm. who come knowing the score and knowing that they've got to work very hard. and, and uh, and cross our fingers. Well, you brought two of your talented children in today. We right. saw at the beginning of the program impressing us all. Um, Rachel and Rachel Brown and Toby Jones. Rachel, are you going to go on the stage when you leave school, do you think? Well, I like to do dancing when I leave school, but it's very hard to get into. So my parents suggest I have a good education behind me, so, so it's something to fall back on. You're not going to be one of the kids from fame, are you? I don't think so. <laughs> are you enjoying this production? Yes. Now, you're dressed up as, um, oh, something rather special. Who are you? Doll the Mole. Doll the Mole. And this is in the new production you're doing at the Roundhouse. It's Christmas. Yes. What is it called? It's called Tim Pan Alley. Mm -hmm. Tell me something about it, Toby. What is the story about? Well, uh, basically, it's uh, the uh, story of uh, Ali Barber and the 40 Thieves set in uh, Chicago uh, <laughs> in the gangster time in about 1920. And, it's with, uh, and, and the part you play? Uh, Haroon al Karuni, <coughs> uh, who's a sort of head uh, gangster who yeah. takes over the city. Uh, you obviously look the part and you sound the part. I was watching it rehearsal earlier. Yeah. Is there any history of acting in your family? Uh, my father's an actor, yes. Go on, who is it? Uh, Freddie Jones. Freddie Jones, of course. So do you think you might carry on in the tradition later? Well, uh, yeah, I suppose I'd like to, but um, <laughs> I want to do other things as well, journalism, things like that. It's, I don't sort of restrict it just to acting. Okay, a serious journalist as well as an actor. There's a lot of them about, actually. <laughs> well, you two are going to do um, a little bit from that production, so I'll let you go over there and organise yourself, psych yourselves into your parts. And meanwhile, Jeremy, if you'd explain this particular scene. Right, well, um, Karuni has, has uh, discovered that a lot of his goodies have been stolen by somebody who we all know to be Ali. Um, 
and he's come up with what he thinks is an absolutely foolproof plan to find uh, the, the victim. He's dispatched his team of mini gangsters off to all around Chicago to find them. He's left alone uh, and he explains why he is such a genius to, uh, to his doll them all. You perceive, doll, what real brain power can achieve when harnessed to practical genius. What can mere models hope to achieve in life if, like Don Quixote, they merely tilt at windmills? Nada. Me comprendes? Oh, yeah? Was it muscle made me the nonpareil? Is it hustle provides the key? Oh, yeah? Is it money ensures you'll never fail? Fate is funny, you must agree. No, it was my powers of deduction that have brought me to the peak. Yeah! In syllogistic reasoning, I'm sheer unique. Oh, yeah! There may be those who in the critical vein might knock my analytical brain. I'm Plato trained, ingrained in Cato. Though my leanings veering to Freudian, take my meaning, I'll never slip. Oh, yeah! Something clever can fill the void again. Should I ever relax my grip? Yeah! No, because my powers, powers of deduction that have brought me to the peak. Yeah! In syllogistic reasoning, I'm sheer unique. Oh, yeah! There may be those who win the critical vein. Might knock my analytical brain. I'm Plato trained in brain in Cato. Did loaded now with brain and psyche and thinking and genie with brain and science and reason. Philosophy will bruise them, will lose them, will simply confuse them with brain. And that show opens at the Roundhouse on the 27th.